Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And boy, I tell you, we've got a show today, so we're just going to get right into the show. And as you note, I'm, I'm still trying to reach out and get engaged with uh, vets that are out there, and uh, your loved ones and whatever. To basically have them go to the VA and uh, get their cards and get the benefits. You know, the clock is running out now. I mean, in all due respect, if you don't get your, get your benefits, two to one, then someone's going to probably turn in and cut it back. And people are going to lose out again. So make sure you get those folks down there to the VA and get them their benefits. That they're sitting there waiting for them, okay? All right. On that particular note, um, we had a busy week last week. We had a very, very busy week. As you know, Carolina, the, the whole issue with the flag-raising deal, um, uh, coming down, if you will, in the, as far as the uh, the battle flag, uh, uh, the Confederacy aspect of it, that was a major, major issue. Uh, and at the top of the list was uh, was, was was Donald Trump, uh, as you note. Uh, he is uh, also a, a candidate running for governor. I mean, for president of these United States. Very interesting situation. We're going to talk about that, and uh, and then we're going to also talk about the immigration issue. That's a big, big issue. That was it was just. It basically just took over the uh, all the media stuff uh, this Sunday. I looked at all the shows; a very interesting piece. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about those three areas, and then the other thing we're gonna talk about uh, is uh, again. Uh, let me go back again. And by the way, we're gonna try to relate that to Oregon. We want to we want to relate everything to Oregon. The national stuff will sort of take its own, but we've got our own areas of interest that I just shared with you. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be doing. And my and with me today, uh, you've seen Fred. Fred Stewart is here. He's a he's a businessman. He's a broker in his own rights in the real estate industry. I still remember the time when when Fred started his his real estate business, and uh, was trying to get folks motivated in the Northeast Portland corridor to buy property and to buy real estate. Many didn't do. Some who did uh, benefited. But the fact of the matter is, now we're talking about gentrification. <laughs> and now I can't go to Fred without saying, and say, Fred, you, you got any more houses in this area? And, oh, Bruce, I'm sorry. We're running out of real estate. <laughs> we're running out of real estate. And if you're going to buy a piece of real estate here, you better bring, bring yourself a half a million dollars or better, you know, in this mm -hmm. area somewhat you like that. You still get it for less than that, but okay, well, you're going to need a, a, a lot, you don't need some of money. money. You're going to need some money. money. And then my other, the other guy is, is, uh, uh, is, my, is my dear friend over here, Clifford Walker. You've seen Cliff before. I can remember Cliff uh, making an effort to getting, getting, getting IE black folks involved with reference to a sister city. Sister City here was a very, uh, and I and I and he can tell you stories about how he was able to get that done. Well, it happened. It, it happened, but it happened. It happened, and so um, I want to thank him here. So so he's got some he's got some good background uh, on the area dealing not only just in in the in the Portland metropolitan area but in the state. So both of these guys are very very well astute to what was going on. So we're going to talk to these issues, but again, like I said, we're going to be focusing here in the state of Oregon. Okay, all right. Let's start off with the uh, with the flag deal. I think that was a very interesting piece with the flag. Uh, um, you know, we saw a lot of stuff on the, on the media about the flag aspect of it, and uh, it seems as though that um, uh, the governor uh, was it Barbara? Uh, she was the she, she's the governor and Republican governor, and she led the charge and and um, uh, with that piece. And at the end of the day, uh, the flag is down. And uh, naturally, there was a lot of rejoicing. It's all in all respect. Uh, I guess the big push was as a result of the death of the the nine folks that were in the in in the, in the church, along that pillar line, and and that 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 gave it the 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 push to start with to mm -hmm. talk about the issue. But had it not been for, in all due respect, some of the key Republicans running around that supported this piece, I don't think it would have happened. What do you think? What's your take on that? Well, I think you know it's a final push. You know caused by the nine people who were who were murdered right um but this has been an issue uh that's bubbled up and bubbled down my entire life within the black community right. even when i lived in uh, mississippi myself back in 1975 you know there were people who were let's just say very uh supportive of keeping the flag up mm -hmm. but pretty much most black people that i know not all black people but mm -hmm. most nearly everybody i know mm -hmm. It's never like flag. Like I was telling some of my friends, uh, how, how often do you see a black person wearing the Confederate flag in your entire life? Mm 
It is extremely rare. I've never seen a black person do it in front of me. I've seen photos of a black person mm -hmm. doing it, but I've never no. uh, had a black person around me say, hey, I'm going to you know, wear the Confederate flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Confederate flag down south, uh, maybe not for this particular generation that's around now, let's say under 40, but you know, the people who were throwing rocks at Martin Luther King and the people who were um, you know, doing the, the bus rides and, and d during the summer of 64 and, and when um, James Meredith went to the University of Alabama, the protesters, they went using that flag mm -hmm. to basically intimidate mm -hmm. one, black people. They wanted black people to be intimidated. No, it was the battle flag. Yeah, it's, it's it, the battle they looked flag. at it as a battle. Yeah, the battle and flag. two, they wanted to identify themselves to other white people mm -hmm who would know that, hey, we're in this fight together. Yeah, and the, what's right. the fight? We're going to continue to oppress black people. So, you know, white people who are sensitive to racism in, the, in America and the pain that, it's, that it causes everybody, but especially black people, um, they are not supportive of the flag. White people who are insensitive to that or ignorant of the history, their present day history. We're not talking about the history of the Confederacy. We're talking about the history of the Civil Rights Movement alone. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they're ignorant to that. Yeah, they'll, you know, they'll support it. Mm -hmm. Cliff, what do you think? What was, your, what was your take when you first saw that piece? I'm fascinated by the debate. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like to understand symbols myself, mm -hmm. and I, I'm with you. I think the stars and bars or the Confederate battle flag is a symbol of uh, black intimidation mm -hmm. and uh, oppression. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's what it, I'm from the North. And even when I was in the service, we learned quickly that the Confederate flag was almost a symbol or a statement or, or a sign that blacks are not welcome. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's how I interpreted it. Mm -hmm. And I've never been, uh, um, uh, felt good about seeing it on the pickup trucks or wherever you see that mm -hmm. flag. Because to me, it was a message of, uh, of unwelcoming mm -hmm. blacks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what it meant. Okay, okay. And, well, you know, Bruce Dallin. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's get through this other mm -hmm. piece. We're going to this piece. Because I want to bring it home now. I really want to bring it home here in the state of, as far as Oregon is concerned. There was an article recently in the Oregonian that said that uh, uh, Representative Lou Frederick, I think from, from this district, I don't know what, what's the district, uh, but it, from Northeast Portland. Northeast. Northeast Portland, Representative Lou Frederick, had, um, had, had, there was an article in there, and he had gone to the representative, to the House, I guess, 60 of them, and uh, 38 of them signed the petition to basically take down the, the, this Mississippi class with the brand of the, um, of, of the, uh, the Confederacy, yeah. yeah, Confederacy on that particular flag. But like I said, he got 38 people to sign off on on this deal. And, and uh, but it was kind of interesting that not all 60. You know, I mean, the House runs the basically they've got the majority, and uh, they got the majority, got the, the governorship uh, with Kate Brown and the whole nine yards. But they didn't sign off on it. I didn't. I saw the list of people, the 38 people. The Kate Brown name wasn't on there. The governor's name wasn't on there. Tina Kotek, who's happened to be my re my representative. In, in North 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 Portland here, uh, she wasn't on there, um, and I, I, I didn't see the I didn't see the Republicans that were on there. Uh, you, you understand me? So I'm, I'm having some issues with Reverend. Well, what, what do you think about that? Well, now, oh, by the way, let me let me qualify. I'll say too, I did call uh, Representative Lou Frederick, and as usual, he will not return his calls. I mean, it's very difficult trying to run him. And a lot of times, people use the excuse of, "Well, I don't need to talk to Bruce Bouchard because he happens to be a Republican." You know, we play that game, and I, I, no. we need to Next time I see Lou, it. I'll ask him. I mean, Lou should talk to everybody, but he definitely should talk to a member of the black community no matter what. Um, I'm well, sure, to anybody. I'm I mean, sure, he's a sure representative. Lou, he's a representative. I'm sure Lou was just I'm not, busy. I'm, I'm not interested in it. I'm sure Lou yeah. was just busy, but I, I'll talk to I, him. I'm, I'm glad that you have access to him because <laughs> I sat on the Oregon Commission on Black Affairs. We were both uh, sitting in chairs of, of being commissioners, mm -hmm. and when the... Uh, Former Governor uh, Kitzhopper, Kitzhopper right. uh, summarily dismissed two black commissioners without cause, without reason. Lou didn't inquire hmm. as to why. Hmm. And I said, I expected him to inquire because he's my representative and I'm also sitting on the commission. 
and people are saying, and you why? were chairman too at the time. Well, I've been, I was chair for a couple times, but uh -huh. in our own body, mm -hmm. the governor attacked members of the Black Affairs Commission, and people were saying, okay, but why? Mm -hmm. And we had hoped that Lou, in his position as mm -hmm. a legislature, would have defended the Oregon Commission on Black Affairs members mm -hmm. uh, to the point he would seek an answer. Mm -hmm. That's all. Well, I, I'm yeah, surprised. Hey, I don't know the situation. No, I'm, I'm surprised that Lou well, It's not about not you don't know the situation. Yeah. I'm sharing with you no, what, no, what, I, what actually transpired. No, I know. I know. I believe 100% 100, 100 well, no, what it, he said. It, no, it's, But I'm just it's, saying it's, it's just surprising to me. It's I, facts, yeah. I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to know why, why Lou did but it. But here's, here's where I'm at, Fred. Mm -hmm. If there's a call to take down the Mississippi flag mm -hmm. because of its offensive symbolism, mm -hmm. those who know, know the history of Oregon look at the Oregon flag and see that symbol 1859 when Oregon was constituted. It, it's a symbol of a state that uh, forbid blacks to even be here. So the Oregon state flag is equally mm. offensive mm. to those who know the history of black people in Oregon, period. I, yeah, but, mean, I don't know. But you got to be, be, be fair. I mean, what I would like to see a black leader do, I mean, Jackie Winters, Loretta Smith, anybody black that's elected, just go ahead and take it down. I mean, don't be asking white people to stop offending you. Mm -hmm. You well, know, just I, I, I mean, agree. I would just say I would. I like agree to see, with you. I mean, that's if, what if I, I would if Lou and I were having beers, I'd say Lou. Yeah. Take well, what, take what? your behind down there, <laughs> and take it down. And he he'd probably say like it, you know piss off Chip Shields or something. But you know, I said so what? Chip well, Shields well, can't yeah. kick your ass. Fred, I will. I don't think Chip can kick his ass. Yeah, you know, watch the watch the. Uh, I'm the sorry. Lines, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. But it's it it is a thing that. I think we're disappointed yeah. that our white brothers and sisters aren't a little bit more supportive of our cause. Not that they have to be or need right, to right, be or right, want right, to be, right, right, right. but it's a reflection in who our leadership is. Well, you can ask any of my friends, especially my white friends. I mean, I will do the best I can well, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, explain yeah. Mm -hmm. and try to educate. Yeah. Sure. And I, and I, and I want to listen. Sure. But when something gets a little bit too far, I'm just going to take my own action. And that would be fun if Lou did that. I mean, if Lou did that, I would love to see Lou do that. No, well, he, Lou, he, he, Lou should just no, drive no, down no, to Salem no, no, the fact and that take he that flag it. down. Now, I know that if you were elected, you would have done it well, yesterday. Lou, you know, Lou's 10 years older than me. so he. You, know, you mean, Timmy, you wouldn't have gone down there and taken the flag down? Had you oh, been if, I, if I was a legislator, I would have taken it down. <laughs> Matter of fact, I wouldn't have asked. I would, man, that's so humiliating. <laughs> I mean, it you got to go it is, it is. and get a petition. Get a, you know, I would go and tell, tell my wife, friends, would you go with me and help me take it down? Yeah. But I'm not going to ask them. To, would you please stop offending me? You know how hum humiliating that is. Yeah. That's like a woman saying, "Please don't rape me, everybody." Yeah, yeah. Come on. That's well, you not, know, that's I guess right. the, other, the other point I'd raise in, in that same regard is that you know recently the Supreme Court just passed the whole issue on gay rights, right? About the the, the marriage deal. I'm right? learning. You know what I'm saying? That whole peace aspect of it. And and and, and I'm thinking about well, gee whiz, you you got a governor now, and I hey, I, I I think he's I, I think Kay's a nice person, if you will. But she, okay, but, nice but the fact of the matter is, they made mention in the paper right up front that you know that she was bisexual and this, that, and the other. So she benefited. And I want to see of, proof. And that. a lot of times, and a lot of times, well, you just call up the Oregonian. No, I want to see they, her kiss a girl. They, 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 what was it? I want to see our oh, governor kiss okay, a girl. Well, uh, well, let's put it this way. I mean, I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I, I'm just saying to you I mean, they that, that, that the on. Supreme Court just passed this deal. And my point is that uh, the point I'm making is that the, the gays are constantly always talking about equal rights for the gays. You know, on our basically talking about the same equal rights that IE blacks tend to identify with. Mm -hmm. And I would have thought that in all due respect the governor would have signed that overnight, right off the bat. And then then yeah. I got in my own representative in my own area, Tina Kotek, in the same boat. I mean she yeah. she she, she know, makes it admittedly that she's gay and the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And you know, hey, we're supposed to be brothers and sisters. Together. You know how powerful a moment it would be in Oregon if Tina Kotek Oh man, yes. Speaker of the House, uh, yes. smart woman, yes, yes, gay yes. Yes. If she had gone and taken the flag down, yes, oh, it would be powerful. That would have been a powerful well, it's moment. It's still not too late. The flag is still flying. Well, hopefully, if any of her friends watch this, they will give her the suggestion because okay. that. Well, we're giving that, it to her now. That would mean a lot to black people around the yes, country. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. And would. that would mean a yeah, lot for yeah. civil rights. Yes, it would. You know, if because you know she's a, she's a white woman and she's lesbian, 
And I'm sure she's got some black friends. I've never met any, but I'm sure she's got some out there. Well, you know, that's my and, representative. I mean, well, she's got to yeah, be related to me. Yeah, but I'm talking about friends. I'm talking about people you send. I'm a friend. She's an elected official. But you know, when I say well, friends, what, I mean, what are you talking about? I mean, people that you keep in contact with. Like I'm in she, contact with her every day. Well, I'm a representative. When she's sick, what's this, what's this I'm deal? talking about. That's my representative. You know, are the you people saying something that, about my representative? No, I'm talking about, does she tell you when she has a headache and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, she does. Oh, no. When really? she's not doing things like she's supposed to, like responding to some of my issues. Well, what I'm getting to is, you know, that's what I'm one of the things that's really <laughs> sad sometimes yeah, about yeah, okay. our state is, you know, both Kate Brown, man, if Kate Brown just marched oh, down out that. of her office oh, if and ordered it down, yes, yes, I mean, yes. who's going to arrest her? Yes, yes, Nobody. Yes, yes. And who's going to get arrested over removing yes, that flag? Yes, yes. And then, oh, or if, uh, Tina Kotek? What are you doing tomorrow morning? Um, Can we go down to the Capitol tomorrow? No, nah, I can't get arrested. They arrest my, my, my behind. Well, no problem. We'll be together. You yeah, take but the, I got it. You I take got the bottom bunk. I'll take the top. I got you real estate. Problem. You know, I can't do it tomorrow. But you know, if you want to go down there, do it next week. Let's do it. Let Let's me go. see. Let's go down let there. We'll let me check look it at out. my schedule. I'm, 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 would you go with me? Well, can, can you come out? Can, I, you, can I, you go I, with me? Can you go with us? You know, you know they're going to arrest. I'm going to be. No, they're not going to arrest. Oh yeah, they. I'm going to be there. They're not going to arrest. Yeah, they will. You don't think? No, the jails are. Full no, they won't men. let us in there very long, but they're going to arrest us. They're not going to arrest us. These white people will arrest us. Well, Are get, you kidding get, me? Get your two or three. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, no, wait, I mean, wait. they're friendly. They're friendly, but they're going yeah. to arrest me. If they didn't arrest me, I would crack up. It would be nice. I, it it would we, be nice if, if you would arrest. No, it would be nice if help. we had legislative leadership. That's right. There you going go. down there to exactly. take it down. Exactly. It's not here exactly. in Oregon. Exactly. But you know, that was a great moment. See, this shows you that Tina has like no smart black people around her. Wait a minute. Because now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. If I wait, 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 was wait, working wait minute, for her, wait a minute, wait a minute. oh my She's God. Not if I oh, was working wait, 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 for Tina Kotek, wait, wait a minute. What are you saying? Oh, and I'm the trying day to clean that it up, black Fred. girl you trying crawled to clean up in South, it up, in, in South for, Carolina I, I don't and took that flag, I would have called her up and said, girl, you know what we're going to be doing tomorrow? We're going to be going and taking down some flags. Yes. Oh my God. And I'd have a bunch of cameras out there. Yes, yes, Oh man, that... I tell you what, she'd get an Ebony magazine on that one. <laughs> she Ebony. would, get, maybe Jet, but for sure Jet, possibly Ebony magazine. Those are black magazines. I know, but a white girl, a white gay girl okay. taking down right. the Confederate flag. Good point. Good point. She's going to get an Ebony magazine. Good point. Good point. Good point. And she's going to get in Newsweek. Oh, <laughs> man. Doing that. Oh, my she, God. She, <laughs> she's going to get in Bruce Weeks. Yeah, right? no, yeah, no, 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 that no, just, no. I was, well, I was if any of you out there know CNN, Tina, and okay. and right, please right. give her get, that idea. We're getting out of order here now. <laughs> if, you know, we're, we're, if you know her, if you talk to her. <laughs> but we're looking for champions idea. in Oregon. We're looking for champions. Yeah, we're looking Tina, you heard the deal. Okay, Tina, get on the job. Okay, okay. we've covered a little bit about the flag piece, and hopefully we get something done. Maybe next week, right? We're going to put something together on that piece. I wouldn't mind going down there. I just can't do it Monday. Okay, the other issue is immigration, you know, the elite legal immigration aspect of it. That's big. That's that's huge right now. And actually, the person who brought that issue up was, was uh, Donald Trump, mm -hmm. right? And he jumped into this whole situation. You know, all of a sudden, it looked like he's going he's gonna to be part and partial. Of that. That's the national peace aspect of it here. But when you start thinking about it from a local perspective, we have our own illegal immigrants here, it's right? Not that, it's not that bad. Not that bad? What's, what's that, that I bad? Mean, how many, how many we, are you talking we about? We import more Russians to Oregon every year than we have illegal aliens. Was that right? Yeah. I how mean, many? How many are you talking about? Oh, we got about three hundred and fifty thousand right. or so Russians that weren't here ten years ago, and we I, last we number I heard, we had like forty thousand, fifty thousand illegal no aliens. Well, no, no, no more. Than well, that. I mean, maybe Lars is lying, but he said like forty or fifty thousand. He's always he's, he's got this thing on the show where he's always keeping everybody, keeping the, you know, updated yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, right, right, I mean, right, there right. are more right, white right. guys in Oregon married to Russian women who weren't here ten years ago mm -hmm. than there are illegal brown skinned people. Mm. So to me, when I hear a Republican bring that thought, up, that issue up in Oregon, about Mexican. That, that's, that's, that's all I thought we were talking. About. Well, that, no, that's what I'm trying to say. I, I'm still to this day blown away that in you know 15 years, the, Southwest Washington, Oregon, can grow nearly 700,000 Russians, mm -hmm. and people don't think that's a big deal. I mean, I don't care that they're here, but it's amazing how easy it is for somebody uh, sitting in Moscow to come and become a legal documented citizen in Oregon, but some guy down in Mexico City, oh my God, that's tough, you know? And it's not an issue. So I, what's the solution to the problem? The solution- They, they had E-Verify on that piece. I mean, you, know, you, know, you know what E-Verify is yeah. talking about. And that basically there's a policy you know, that says, okay, fine. Uh, if, you have, if you wanted to, 
if a person comes in here and an employee cannot hire anybody unless he go through this process, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But what about just, uh, and that's, that's already on the books. So why not just go on and enforce the law? Well, we should, we should make it well, easier for it? people, well, our southern brothers and sisters, to move okay. here. We, we need to understand the law, and we also need to understand the history, because at one time, Oregon shared a border with Mexico. Okay. Uh, uh, when you start talking about Mexico, it depends on what period of time, because California, Arizona, Colorado, Nevada mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. all part of uh, Mexico, mm -hmm. part of the mm. Republic of Mexico. Mm. So we have this shock about, you know, they're coming, they've been here. Mm -hmm. That's like, you look at the West Coast, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Bernardino, like, come on. That's where the name comes from. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 was a, it was a Hispanic, Hispanic or Mexican right. settlement before right. it was See, an I think American. This goes back too far. I hear you, I understand about that, but that's just way back too far. I don't know any of those people who were... Well, Santa Ana, you know the can't do Yeah, but he, Santa Ana's been dead over he, 200 but he years. Sold, but he sold the deal, you know. But, but, but what I'm just saying, the people have been here for so long. Yeah, right, long. right, 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 right. Yeah, right, right. but, you know, we have a nation here. We do have borders. Um, you know, I don't feel people should come here illegally. I'm against that. But I am sensitive to the situation because, like I said before, it is easier for anybody in Europe anybody in Russia to immigrate to this very land that we're walking on right now than somebody from Guatemala or Mexico or you know any of the southern countries and it has to be the, because of their race well, the because point... it is so obvious it is so easy so light years easier for a white child born today to end up here when they're 18 years old mm. than it is for a brown-skinned child or a black-skinned child, yeah, yeah, yeah. you understand, to end up here, mm -hmm. um, you know, in Portland. So mm -hmm. when I hear guys, especially conservatives, please forgive me, getting into the the immigration you issue, you look at him saying, I'm looking at both of you. No, you got you, the Republicans. No, no, you're the conservative one. No, no I'm not you're conservative. The, not, you, you're our local Trump. I'm what not. are you talking about? You're our local Donald Trump. What, give, us, give us a break. I, you know what I mean? No, but in all due it respect, was the Republicans in Oregon then that right. had the progressive platform. There you go. They were the Lincoln Republicans. There you go, you like know. me, yeah. Lincoln. You know, you, you look at the Oregon flag again, a symbol. It's inscribed in the Oregon flag, the Union. It's, right. it's part of our symbolism, what we stand for. Yeah. And for us to even allow a, a secessionist flag to fly mm -hmm. on, on our capital grounds when we stand for the union. Well, do we understand that history? I mean, you know. I don't think it's been taught, but. N n what? I agree. Well, you know, that's a good, that, that's another good point. You know, about, there are two things. One, I want to make the point about the fact that it's been said also there was 10, about 40 million, 40 million illegal uh, immigrants in this country right now. See, yeah, no, I the believe. number 10 million is normally related to the Mexican aspect of it, uh -huh. you, know, you know, and Latinos aspect of it. But the other 30, like what Fred was talking about, all these other folks that are coming in too, but they're not being cited. Okay? I, I do not believe there are 30 million or even 10 million illegal Russians or Northern Europeans in the United States. That's I, a lot of folks. Pretty soon I, we're I, have... I, I've seen tons of ice trucks in my life, and I have not seen them lo loaded with that many, I don't think I've ever seen a white person on an ice truck. Well, the hmm. question is, are we going to yeah, have I, to take I, down the Statue of Liberty? Because I think it's the one with the mo motto, bring us your, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. unfortunate yeah, but you, people. But you have to go within a certain area. You, you get off the ships and, and you, you check you out. Yeah, you check them out. Check you just out. Move, just move the, the Statue of Liberty to Arizona. No, I I like no, so if my memory is correct, Donald Trump's wife is from Russia. No, no, I think yeah. she's she sweet. I think this Isn't last she, one. She's sweet. Well, the thing is, she she immigrated here. Mm -hmm. We're talking legally. about competition for yeah, labor. This, 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 now, uh, what, 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 what do you think about the Donald Trump? What, you, is anything got a problem with him? Uh, hey, everybody's an opinion. You know, the guy's got money. You just say, hey, I'm a, I got, I got something. I, 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 I want to talk about something. I want to talk about legal immigration. Well, the United well, States yeah. is a capitalist nation. Okay, all right. Money talks. Right. Trump. And the other got stuff. Money, well, right? I understand. Okay, right, right. Well, and. There's no harm in having money. Fred, what do you think about it? You're a very opinionated kind of a guy. I think he's hit a chord in politics. I don't know if he's going to be able to continue to hit that chord where people are tired of politicians right. being um, politicians. I mean, being thin. thin. You know, you can't trust them. Kind of like what we were talking about yeah. here yeah. was why is, you know, Lou Frederick, who I think is a great guy, why is Lou Frederick running around asking a bunch of white people in Salem 
basically begging white people, please stop offending me with your flag. Yeah. He is a state representative. Well, but he's ineffective. He, well, yeah, but... The, the, yeah, what do you mean? Well, he's ineffective. Well, it's not he's ineffective. He's ineffective. He's ineffective. But, What's the deal? But what I'm trying to say is, it's not so much I'm trying to say Lou's ineffective, what I'm saying, because he's a, actually, he's the best black legislator we've ever had in Oregon. What's that now? He's the best, most successful black legislator Oregon has ever had. Yeah, he Period. Can. Period. Now, Margaret Carter was a legislator. Oh, there. my I mean, God. To Ma the Senate. Margaret Carter... Yeah, Evel Gordley there. Margaret I mean, Carter what's, what's, hasn't what are you done... About? Margaret Carter did not do 10% of, in her entire time in the legislature. What about Evel? I mean, she sang a lot. I mean, Margaret sold a lot of Negro spirituals. It's one of the reasons why, you know, I couldn't go down there when she was down there. <laughs> you know, she was very, she was good for that. She'd sing a good old Negro spiritual. But, no, we, we, uh, we, we, no, but we, as far as actually no, getting That's something okay. done, everybody, everybody the, has their own the little thing. You know, everybody. You know. Yeah, but you don't, you don't improve the condition of your of your community. When I say your community, okay, the community I, of I Oregon specifically, you're not improving the community of black people when all you were doing for the most part is singing Negro spirituals. Okay, what about Avil? Avil did a couple of good things. She before Lou, she was the most successful black legislator. But you're still ever. picking at Lou over over her. Lou has, has actually done quite a you know quite a more bit than more than Avil? More than Avil more than Avil and more than uh, than um, uh, Margaret Carter combined. What about what about Jackie Winters? Yeah. Jackie Winters can Jackie's a Republican. She's, Jackie's a Republican. She's still there. She's she, still there. She is a very nice productive, woman. Very productive. But Jackie Winters right here, if you had her sitting right here, you should do that one day, and say, Miss Winters, you know, Senator Winters, what have you done for Oregon that's meaningful? Well, she may say this. And she, you will be bored. Well, she, no, I no, understand no, no. that she, she, she put she's the, done some things now. put the, uh, the, the politics together to establish the Oregon Commission on Black. That's Affairs. right. She did that We're under okay. Vicatia. Okay. Under Vicatia. Now, Vicatia. now, what is that good for? That, that's huge. Okay. That's another question. Uh, okay, that's what I'm, that's yeah, what but, I'm getting But it's to. there. You know what I'm saying? But you know. she did get out there. Well, I mean, think about the Commission on Black Affairs. You know, it was so powerful that, you know, Kit Sauber could kick off two black people off, and the media doesn't even pay attention to it. No, her. the legislature didn't pay uh, care. The, the, the well, no, Jackie was involved in it. Did she come to you then? And no, 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 no. Nobody came. Nobody came to you? The, the Oregon Commission, when I was on it, was very proactive mm -hmm. and was investigating some of the grievances of black people brought to the commission. And basically, the state wasn't interested in... Uh, well, the, state's, the state is not interested because they do not feel the average white voter is interested. I'm not okay. And the reason why the average white voter isn't interested is we do not have candidates who are even testing the issues, whether they be black or white. Yeah, yeah I, I do. Agree, yeah. I personally feel there are more people interested in um, being fair and equality in this state than is reflected in the people that are representing us right now. But right now, with all their polling and with all the, the work that they're doing, they do not feel your average voter hmm. cares. Well, what wait a they got, they got, they got other people. commissions in that whole deal that was going. You had the gay commission, you got the Hispanic commission, you got well, the women commission. That's uh, a under that example. Same, under the, that the same, gay, the deal. gays and lesbians have done a, a great job of making sure the legislature knows that people do care. I think just as many, if not more, people care about. Uh, discrimination and civil rights in general in the state of Oregon, regardless of the people who are being offended. Um, but the gays have done a very good job of highlighting it. They've had help nationally, but even locally, they've had great, you know, great leadership on it. Mm -hmm. But you know, when it comes to the black community, our black leaders have not, have been ineffective. How are we going to break that cycle? For about for about forty five years. How are we going to break that cycle? Well, we need new people. I mean, okay, we friend. we need we need new people uh, stepping up. Uh, we need white people asking questions. And when I say white people asking questions, they need to ask questions of the people that we've already got in place now so that they know that they do care. I tell my white friends all the time, you don't know how powerful it is for you yourself to start asking questions about discrimination and what the state's going to do about it, all discrimination, not right, just gay, yeah, right, 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 to right, right. the people you're going right, to vote right, for. Right, 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 you don't right. have to tell them what to do at first. Start asking questions. Start showing that there is a group of people, a group of voters out there that are paying attention, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are expecting some leadership in that area. Okay, on that note, tell you what we'll do. We're going to take a short break, and we'll come back, and we'll continue on, this, on these points, okay? We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest.
This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Here we go. We're back. Boy, I tell you, we're, mm -hmm. we're really getting into it. We didn't even take a break. We were talking about this issue. It got so good in here. Uh, one of, one of, one of the, the guys that's handling the camera, the camera my staff, uh, basically came up and started talking about this whole piece. Mm -hmm. You know, we want solutions. They want solutions. You know, everybody's trying to basically make recommendations, and that's what we need to talk about, too. Well, now, let, let's, let's talk about the, the so-called one of the solutions. I'm going to throw that on the table. What? We, so the, the the solution to the problem to this issue of uh, okay. of, uh, um, of the flag and what it represents and we've gone I, another way I, but I'm, I'm I'm excited especially what Fred is saying going and, on, what, I, what, what do you say well I think we have this thing going that is black people's responsibility right, it's not yeah. black people's responsibility right right, right. Uh, I saw that in the anti-apartheid movement the, 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 you know they wanted to give that issue mm -hmm. to black people to deal with like <laughs> it was a black issue no this is a human rights issue it's mm -hmm. it's a, it's a it's a political issue uh, and and thank you for the abolitionists and thank you for the white ab abolitionists mm -hmm. because they made a difference mm -hmm. and that's what we need in oregon not just black people are excited yeah, about yeah. the right thing yeah but yeah. also well your average well, that's why i think your average white voter right now they look at their liberal uh, people that they vote for. We got a lot of very nice, very liberal white people in our in our government. Right? What's, your right. wait, wait, but what's your definition of a liberal? Well, the Democrats, what? the progressives. But you, what I'm getting you, to, you know, Republican can't be a says, liberal. Is that what when, you're saying? Hold on, hold on. But when somebody says they are a Democrat or they are a progressive, or they're a liberal, there are certain values that your average voter assumes that person has, whether they do or not. They assume they're against discrimination and that they're going to fight against it. They're assuming that they're for uh, our environment and protecting it. They assume that they are Who's for... Who's making those assumptions? Well, I think your average voter is. He is. No, okay. I think your average voter in Portland, as far as in Multnomah County... But in County, Oregon, in the no, Oregon no, history, you, you, yeah, the yeah. Democrats are back the Klan. Yeah. yeah, but that was back, gosh... Oh, yeah, but, but you made a point, but ago. you made a statement. Well, over see, 50 years ago. You see, now look, Fred. I mean, there's no, nobody no, right listen, now listen, that, listen, that I know listen, of in the legislature listen, that's listen in the Klan. Listen to what you I'm know saying. Anybody? Listen to what I'm saying. Well, I know a few. Uh, that are in the Klan today? Yeah, yeah. You know, in the legislature? Easy, easy. I want to know their names. Easy. Some of them are Democrats, though. Really? I, I don't want to say anything. But, but anyway, uh, but the bottom line is this. It, that education piece. My point is education. We had the flag piece aspect. They were very strong about it. Many of them were saying something about it was historical. In this way. And the same thing was, as far as our history is concerned, during slavery days and whatever, it's not taught in the schools. It's not taught in schools. Both of those items aren't taught in the schools. We need to know. Well, people don't know, they, know they, they that don't Oregon know. was constituted That's right. to be uh, for white only state. That's right. Yeah, but you also have to. Uh, but it's not taught in the schools. Well, see? Well, also, when you teach it, you also have to explain. That an awful lot of white people ignored that and brought black people here anyway. There have been black people here in Oregon no, but the whole time. The, what about it being yeah. taught in the educational system? That's true. I, I wish it was, but Bruce, we don't have... We're like, what, what, the 50th state in the country right now for high school graduations or something oh, well, pitiful, I mean. that, pitifully low. I mean, we don't have a cohesive educational system right now that can get that done. It would be nice for them to get it done, but these guys are having a hard time keeping kids in school and keeping them in, in a position where they're just being able to compete. We, Tesla, Tesla, the, the people who were in charge of locating their factory sat down with me once for cigars while they were here on a courtesy visit now, who are to you Oregon. Talking about? What, what are we Tesla, talking about now? Tesla is a new, uh, you know, the Tesla cars right, right, and, right. The, and the, okay. the uh, Elon Musk oh, yeah, company. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Okay, Tesla 
the, the people behind Tesla were telling me why Oregon wasn't even on their short list, but out of courtesy, they were checking Oregon out. Mm -hmm. And it went straight to our educational system. They went and put up a billion dollar, multi billion dollar factory in Las Vegas. Las Vegas, UNLV, beat out Oregon State University as a better partner for their venture. Hmm. That just shows you how our educational leaders in this state are failing us. It's that bad. Tesla should so be in Oregon. So they looked at the educational system and found yes. out that, in fact, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to it, We're not putting out the product they need, right. as, as right. these people right. told right. me. Right. And, uh, you know, here we've got 10 states going full bore after the, the manufacturing of the products that are being developed in the Silicon Valley. And Oregon is not even in that race at all because our educational system. Now, we're getting a little closer to that. I'm very happy about what we're doing with the um, uh, community colleges, um, you know, making it more affordable for people to, you know, to get you know, education. But we need to go further. We need to be more aggressive for Oregon to grow for Oregon to, have, to grow economically. Well, then the Governor Kitzhopper, they changed the format. You know, you, you don't elect the, the superintendent now. You know, all of a sudden, the governor's responsible. You think Kate is going to be able to do the I, job? I think Kate is going to be a better governor than, than John Kitzhopper, period. Um, you know, I, I think she's going to be a better one than him, period. I, I have always been, a, a, I'm not throwing him under the bus, but I've always been in the opinion that John Kitzhopper, as nice a man as he is, he never was focused on... Uh, the totality of Oregon future. Well, he had to been doing something. He was already there eight years. He was he starting on well, the third you know, time, right? He hit on he hit on environmental issues very well, and other a couple other issues like that. But I really don't think you know our former governor, you know, has a vision that you know Kate Brown and some other people. But what? Tell me something. Why is it that people start talking about people after they've left? I was saying this before he left. I, I mean, I, I wasn't talking did you, about. Did him. you run for office? I didn't run for governor. Well, if you, if you did, well, that's what yeah. you should have done. Yeah. Well, well, it's not well, talking well, you know, about you, people. You, you know what? You, you, well, what's that? What that you may not be a bad idea. Well, I'm only good. fifty. There you go. Let's see what I'm going to be like office. when I'm sixty. There you go. You know, <laughs> when I'm sixty, I might run for governor. I, I, we'll I hope so. You know, I might run for governor. You got some of that Donald Trump tendency. You know, I, I hope. I like that. that. I like that. You know, he will run for governor. Governor Fred Stewart. That would be hilarious. That would, would be you hilarious. Like that? Would you you like know, that? if that happened, you know how many black people that are considered black leaders right now would leave the state of Oregon? I mean, I might run just to, uh, to, to promote them to get the heck out of here. <laughs> when, you oh, know, my God. I, I, I'm very protective of Oregon <laughs> black leadership. Right, right, so right. I don't know who you're right, talking right, about. Well, right, right, yeah, 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 I'm yeah, talking yeah. about the ones most importantly here in Portland, Oregon. I'm not talking about the whole state. Right. We've got some weak ones here in Oregon that have done a very, very poor job of educating our white brothers and sisters on what the real issues are, usually because they're too greedy for themselves. Well, mm -hmm. you know, my, we, we got a lot of Al Sharpton juniors here in Portland. I don't question you <laughs> yeah. on, on that. And, and when I was on the commission, mm -hmm. I, I felt that some of the attitudes of my fellow commissioners were weak at best. Mm -hmm. And that's just... Mm -hmm. No, the, the leaders, you know, yeah, but you know, the leaders we had in the black community up until about 74, 75 are light years better than the ones we got crawling around today. Light years. It's, it's, it's offensive. Hmm. And that's another good reason for black people in Oregon to start being more involved in learning their history. Learning a lot, how, uh, like I was explaining to a how friend of mine the other history? day. They're not educated. Well, I mean, when well, they're not educated. No, they have to start asking questions. They can't rely how on the educational system. ask questions if you don't know where to go to? Well, that You're was good about your show. You're supposed to be going to the educational well, system. Okay, good. Okay. Well, there are going to be things changing to help that, but you, you, you have to start looking. But one of the things I tell people, this, I'm very proud of the state, both black and white, is, you know, 1946 here in Portland, Oregon, white leaders were trying to figure out how to get black people to leave. Yeah. That was the last yeah. time there was a like major yeah. concise effort to get black people to leave. Then in 51, the black uh, community, led by the NAACP, got Oregon to be the first state with a public accommodations law. Mm -hmm. I mean, you understand? Know I mean, we did that, what was it, 10 years before the federal government did it? Yeah. You understand? Know we had some leaders in the state. Leave, yeah. We had yeah. the anti miscegenation law before everybody else. It got struck down, but it, got, it, it actually passed. It actually passed. So, you know, we've had a long history of very good, very uh, effective well, yeah, black leadership in the state of Oregon, but something happened 
Um, it started. It's called the flood. It start no. It started with Reed College. The particular black leader graduated from Reed, and this city has black community has never been the same. Who are you talking about? Ron Herndon. Ron Herndon is one of them. Mm. You know, I'll name others as I as I as I get older, but. We well, have what, an what about Vanport? Here. I mean, don't you give some credit? To look at the well, look at what the black community did di with Vanport. Diverse. Here they you've got very, the city well, trying. It was, it was the largest city in the. In, I understand, in, 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 in but you got the white establishment trying to literally flood, drown as many black people as they could mm -hmm. by by making them and tricking them to stay in Vanport. Vanport happens, and then the black leadership um, basically started using that opportunity to integrate the neighborhoods. Yeah. You understand? Do you know how many pl uh, people uh, don't understand that th we used to be extremely hard redlined in this city? Oh yeah, extremely very much so. hard, and a lot of that started breaking down. The real estate industry, big time. Right after Vanport, and who are the people who led it? The leaders that we had at the time. They yeah. did not miss a beat. Now we we've had in this state <laughs> since the 1860s. No, my brother, strong. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, this is gonna take exception. No, no, I'll let him take exception. I can prove. No, 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 I know I the addresses. Agree. Okay. Oh, 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 you know the no, addresses. I know the addresses. No, well, let him talk. Uh -huh. go on, go We're challenged. Okay. No question yes. about no, it. No, we are way challenged. And uh, I was active in the what they call the anti-apartheid movement, and people worked very, very hard to bring in on your your piece of the the effectiveness of. Uh, what do you call it? Divestment. Yeah. And right. started messing mm -hmm. with the money. And Ron was very much and, involved. And, in and, and but but you you understand that in Oregon there was a bill called the anti-apartheid bill. Yeah. And it mm -hmm. passed. Mm -hmm. But one thing you won't know that 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 act was uh, what do you call rescinded huh. or, or taken back. Mm -hmm by the leadership of the three African-American legislators. Now, what? Wait a minute, wait a minute, you got to say that again now. We, well, we'll back. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, let him get through talking. Now, who are you talking about and what are you talking about? Well, at the time, I think there were three African-American uh, legislators that was up. There was... Jackie uh, was in? Was uh, Winters a part of that? The, the guy who was the treasurer for what? Tom Jim Hill. Hill. Jim Hill. Jim Hill. Okay. Um, um, Bill McCoy. Bill McCoy. Okay. And um, I don't know if the third one was uh, Margaret Carter. Okay. Probably. But they were the sponsors of the bill to stop, the uh, to repeal the Anti-Apartheid Act. And I was just disappointed. But wait, you wait see, minute, this wait, is wait, what wait, disappoints me. I, I didn't understand this, that. This huh? is, I, I didn't understand something here. Are you saying they were, they were sent? I mean, they just... Yeah. Stop. They passed a, bi a bill to end the, uh, the act. But, but look... Me as a 50-year-old, looking at the carnage of the last 27 years in the black com community in Portland, I don't understand why anybody in the black community, I understand how horrible apartheid was and it was bad, but why spend any time on South Africa when we had so many problems right here, right here in Portland? Well, that's why we talked about We've had, time. since 19, two, 1988, August of 1988, we've had almost, over 500 black people murdered by black people here in Portland, Oregon. Over 500. Okay. okay? We've got just a high unemployment rate. We've got a... a failure a, in a, school. A, a, we got failure in school. We got fewer black people being promoted um, and, and starting their own businesses or professional black people being promoted. Yeah. Yeah, I, their, I what I'm getting to is the fact that black people 30 years ago were even focusing on apartheid shows just how bleak it's been for black people. Was that a diversion? It's, uh, I think it was a, a diversion. diversion. Well, it, I, I think it was a diversion because, because things were happening. Because we had, I mean, when I, when I started in real estate, we had black people in Northeast Portland that owned 20 homes. Oh, I remember that. Quite, quite a few owned 20 and 30 that. homes, but they couldn't go down to a bank and get a refi or a second mortgage so they could improve it. So while we had banks still redlining in the 1980s, Banks were still redlining inner northeast Portland the well, day after well, the real estate bank. Who was it? The Amer American State Bank under Booker. I mean, he, didn't he, he's a black man. Booker and, did a few loans, a few but, job, but I'll tell you he, this: he, he was limited. In, in, in 1990, Booker did more loans to black people yep, in northeast Portland yep, yep, than yep. U.S. Bank. Yeah, but U.S. Bank 
had the majority of the black uh, uh, bank accounts mm -hmm. in inner Northeast Portland, mm -hmm. you know. But Booker, is, as tough as it was to get a loan from him, yeah. he still did more loans with yeah, black people yeah, yeah. than U.S. Bank. Yeah. And I don't know what it was for First Interstate, but it couldn't have been better at First Interstate. But what I'm getting to is that's been one of the problems is our black leaders since about 1970. Our leaders. Are, 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 the well, leaders. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, leaders. The people who are. Because, you know, white leaders have been leading the. You know, well, the white leaders are leading the. And they've done a beautiful job making oh, that, this, this state and city such so awesome. Is that but, what about Earl Blumenau? People, what do you about Earl Blumenau? He, he picked up $100,000 uh, from the marijuana initiative. Uh, well, from, I don't know what not half of someone said. God bless he got, Earl. He got, he got 50000 He got 50000 in cash, and the other was in weed. Because he's going to do very well for it. For, you know, for, for the marijuana himself? people. No, for himself. For the marijuana people. But, you know, we don't have... People right well, what now about our education? working on, why can't he, working on leader, black people. He's a leader. Why can't he? Why, why shouldn't he? Why don't you put some pressure on Earl well, to do his job? Well, I think you know. I, every time I'm around Earl, and I'm not around Earl very, very often at all. Like I haven't seen Earl in. Is he a good guy for you? For you? He's friendly. He's nice. He's not he's a nice guy. Huh? He's a nice guy, but Democrat. We got a too, right? lot of is nice white people in is politics that don't Democrat? do nothing for black people. Is he a Democrat? He's a Democrat. Okay. But okay. no, the assumption from the white people who vote for Earl. Yes. Is that Earl is looking out for black people too? Is he? That's it. No, he's not. Okay. But the assumption is that he is. You understand? The assumption is, hey, he's a Democrat. He's been around. Yeah. He's a nice guy. Wears a bow tie. But Earl, he, he, black people don't feel Earl. He rides a bicycle. Maybe. Well, I, I, let, let me uh, share okay. this with okay. you. Go on, Cliff. And and correct me on the numbers, mm -hmm. but I understand black people represent maybe one to two percent of the state population. One point eight. Okay, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And they're doing maybe twelve percent of the prison time. More than oh, that. Oh, oh, that's oh, over oh, twenty. Okay, okay. At the state time? The state, yeah. Okay, it's over twenty. That's alarming. Hmm. Yeah. That is scary. And, and, and this is what I like I put out to my white friends. You know, if you are feel you're colorblind and if you feel our leaders are colorblind, yeah. okay, then you would expect our white leaders. Right. They wouldn't need Fred or any other black leader to say something. Or me. They would. They would look and see the numbers and go, "Something's wrong, wrong here." With and yeah. we are. We're gonna. We are we're going to lean into it. They don't do that. Not because they hate black people. They don't do it because the people they vote for don't make it obvious that they need to do it. Okay. You understand? They're running for office. Yeah, but the black leaders go to them. They ask the black leaders, well, what are we doing? Are well, the, we black, doing the black leaders say, say, yes, you're doing a good job. Black leaders say, give me some money. There, there you go. There okay, you go. for okay. my nonprofit. Okay. Right, there you go. And I, I, uh, I, 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 I will tell everybody that you're working on the issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, that's how the game's played. We didn't have black leaders like that 45 years ago. Mm -hmm. You understand? And uh, But we had black leaders like that for the last 45 years. And that's why when I tell people, when you look at Lou Frederick, he is literally the most successful black legislator in Oregon history. What Just is look he at his record. What is he doing? Oh, he's, he, he's got that, that, uh, um, that uh, we call Superfund uh, bill. What uh, Superfund? To it, do what? To clean up brownfields around the state. Brownfield? What yeah. kind of brownfields? You know what brownfields yeah, are. Oh, so oh, oh, get rid of black folks. In yeah, there's actually some black guys who've gone out and created a business where they're going around and using that fund to create it. I mean, he's actually created people create jobs how many how many businesses how many jobs did he create uh last i looked and this has been about two years it's been about two or i mean, don't know two or three, about, about, ten, about 10 or 15 but the point is well, give, i can't think of any I'll job give, any of the other ones ever yeah bring the him bring him yeah. here no you program. should you, mean, you should bring him because you, you go and call him call well him i'll call him because you know lou's done well i wish he could do better i wish he was more aggressive okay i'll give, but I'll he, give him that. he's done better than the, than them all i oh, mean wow. I'm, all glad, of them. I'm glad i'm glad that you know this yeah yeah, 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 yeah. now yeah. i want to see it now hold it that doesn't mean he couldn't have done better <laughs> no, that doesn't mean the all, next one shouldn't do can, better we are all but but the better. point is this shows you how how bad things are in the state of oregon for black people i mean when i tell people look i've sold 740 addresses in, 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 in northeast portland that is impressive but I tell people, that's not good. I mean, <laughs> I know some white people in Portland who they haven't sold as many as I've sold in inner Northeast, but they've sold more addresses. Right, 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 right. right, right. You understand what I'm talking about? I mean, yeah, right, 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 it, right. We, we, we can do better. You understand? And we've got to put ourselves in position 
where we are advocating for our best interests. Yeah, but but, but and, Fred, and, Fred, and, and but Fred, better. but Fred, don't do this, but it's very, it's very difficult. I mean, I, I remember I had, I was wild and ready to go and wanting to build senior citizen housing, and I was in the rehab business and this, that, and that. I got no support. Well, Bruce, you know, it, it's, that's okay. It's, it's, I'm a businessman. I just went and did hard. something else. You, you know what I mean? It is, it is hard. Yeah. It's hard to be a black real estate broker. I know that. I love it. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I love how hard it is. Yeah. And uh, I mean. I wouldn't mind. Maybe you ought to change. Maybe you ought to go into the nonprofit business. No, uh -huh. no, we got enough <laughs> black people in nonprofit. If I ever do that, well, I don't. You do know, that. I need to be committed. <laughs> oh my God, Fred Stewart create a nonprofit? No, no. You know, well, it, it hurts well, we my know, heart. Yeah, I know. It hurts I, my I, heart I, when I, I come you. across a smart young black yeah, person, I know, I know. man or woman, and I ask him, "Hey, well, you got your degree? What do you plan on yeah, doing with yeah, your degree?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say, "Well." I want to start a nonprofit because I yeah. want to give back yeah. to the community. Yeah. Yeah. And I see them driving a 30 year old car. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a second, you haven't worked to give yourself anything. <laughs> and you're now want to go and work and give back to the community? Uh, yes. Well, some, some folks have gained in the nonprofit industry. You know what I'm talking about. Well, that's about. what I mean. I'm thinking. Who are you talking about? I, well, I'm not going to mention any names, yeah. but I'm just well, saying that, that could be a pretty good racket. No, but it's, it has been an issue here, and I, in all due respect, to, as far as I'm concerned, the, the individual was very talented. It's unfortunately, that's the only vehicle he had to be able to operate Dude. with. I'm talking about Roy J. He had some of like 38, 38 nonprofits. Roy, Roy J. was something. smart it's enough. Said. He's a smart guy, he very smart, smart guy. But more. my point is that the system, that's the only thing the system allowed him to do. Maybe back in the 70s. This, I'm, just, I'm just doing you know, it. It's an issue now. Maybe back in the 70s. You know, wait, 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 let me tell you make... something. Booker went out and started American States Bank. He went out in the 1950s and bought 33 homes. In the early 60s, he sold those 33 homes and took $150,000 he collected from selling those 33 homes and capitalized well, he took the American States Bank. Well, he, he took advantage of the affirmative action during that time, too, because they needed Well, it's still banks. around. I mean, I'm not saying Roy J. should have started a bank, but what I'm trying to say is, we could push ourselves harder. We can do better. You understand? And we need leaders that are like that. Absolutely. We don't have leaders that are like that right so now. So how do how do how do we but get? Both of you gentlemen are leaders no, like no, that. No, no. You got we got so many tribes within this. <laughs> we got so many no, tribes I had, in this community. I, I, we can't we can't work together. I mean, what's the deal? Th there's one elected black person. I won't mention her name, but her favorite word for me is muckraker. 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 Who are you talking about now? Uh, I'm not going to talk about her. Is she a representative? I'm not going to talk about she. No, no, no. She's not a representative, but she's elected. I'm going to just go through the list. No, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to go through the list. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. You've probably seen her as a troublemaker. Also. Is she local? Yeah, I'm well, seeing her as a troublemaker. I'm going to play. I'm going to play. I'm going to play. With I'm seeing her as a troublemaker. Is she local? She's local. Oh, but I. But, there's only one. But, but I grew there's up only here. one I know. She, Loretta she, Smith. She, are you talking she, about? See, see my issue. Are you saying Loretta Smith? I'm I mean, not saying nobody. She's trying to do the best job. I'm not she saying can. anybody. She's trying to do the best job she I'm can. I'm not saying anybody. <laughs> That's the only but, one I know. Well, there's no other black elected in this area other than Lou Frederick. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Elect, elected or not elected, we, we will follow the. Uh, leadership is a is is what it is. Is what it is. And we all have different leaders. Even, that's right, that's you know, right, and right, this whole right. deal of assigning leaders that's to right. black people. I mean, it doesn't that's, what you, you take, that's what they you, do. You take what's going on right now with sweet cakes and with sweet Don, cakes. and Daimler Chrysler. Let's talk about Those sweet two cakes. lesbians that didn't get their cake so they could eat it too. Yeah. And then Daimler Chrysler, who had basically for at least ten years a culture where they were intimidating black people at their their factory not not only that they don't promote black people um for the most part at that factory if you're black you get to a spot pretty quick and you're pretty stuck now you're making good money but there's really a a, a glass ceiling for black people and then you got sweet cakes and the two things that the that that happened between these two organizations are horrible the sweet cakes people are not nice people how they treated the the the, the gay couple Horrible, but you know what's also horrible? Hmm. How Daimler is treating black people in Oregon. Hmm. Now Daimler has a 2.4 million dollar judgment. The sweet cakes people got 135,000, pretty much putting them out of business. Well, Fred, you but not, Daimler, you forgetting Daimler something. is not even worried about two. In fact, <laughs> in three years, Daimler is going to start being racist to black people again, <laughs> because it, because they look at it as it only cost us 200 about, two, about 20, uh, uh, 100 thousand dollars a month, roughly. To be mean to black people, they're just going to keep up. Keep yeah, it up. Fred, you don't understand politics here. Now that came from the Bureau of Labor. Look who's running the Bureau of Labor. Well, it's not state. Brad's fault. 
Huh? It's not Brad's fault. The reason why the reason so why you, so you're no. saying to me so you're saying to me that if you own if you if Fred Stewart owns sweet cake mm -hmm. and you selling cakes and whatever, and somebody walked in there and said, Look, yeah, I want to do this there, mm -hmm. you say, Hey, look, I'm not gonna sell you any any cakes. Mm -hmm. And they're white. What do you think? What do you think they would have done to you? I think they would have given you a second thought. No. You don't think so? You think they would have done the same thing with you? No. They would snap. They would have snapped one hundred thirty-five thousand. Yeah, they would have done it to you. Yeah, they would have done you it. No because problem. I'm a small business. The the way this the bully is set up right now, it is easier for them to fight discrimination in, in small and mom and pop businesses than multi-billion-dollar corporations. Well, they were also if you are in the same uh, thing with the crisis. Right? Well, if you if you are a wealthy company in the state, you can come in here and be as discriminatory toward black people as you want. But if you're a mom and pop business. Well, the full weight of the state can land on you. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the sweet cakes people and the diamond Chrysler Christ people are low lives for how they treated people. Right, 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 we right. should not tolerate discrimination. Well, if you do one on one, you should do the same. But if you're gonna if you're gonna put sweet cakes out of business, right, right, okay. Now, right, the reason why I say it's not Brad Evakian's fault, the, the the Bureau of Labor and Industries does not have the budget to take on major corporations in the state of Oregon yeah, but, for being. But you made but you made a, a distinction. You made a difference here. One was gay. We just passed a Supreme yeah. Court deal, and one was black. Yeah, but so who has the power? Well, no, it's not that. Who if has that the power? gay couple? Hold it. If that gay couple had worked for Daimler Chrysler and Daimler had done the same thing, the same re result would have happened—a two point four million dollar lawsuit. What I'm getting to is major corporations in this state. No, but but you said it, it, maybe. No, no, that wasn't the case. I'm just saying to you, if they weren't a gay couple down at Daimler. No, there wasn't. Okay. Not yet. But the cake was. But I'm telling anybody gay folks, who works okay. at Daimler, I want to see you start filing some complaints if there's any discrimination down there. Yeah. But the point is, what I, what I want to get across is we don't have... Real quick, want, like we, I got about 30 we, seconds. We here. want black people to go out and get good jobs and stuff like that. Well, if they go and they work for major corporations, try to get a job at major corporation, and that major corporation discriminates against them, there is nothing the state of Oregon can do about it. Okay, okay. Well, folks, as you can see, we had a very lively discussion, as far as I'm concerned, a very productive one, and that's what you should do. Get around the table and, and have those discussions, because that's what it's all about. You've got to get involved. We're very upset about our leaders, especially our elected leaders today. So hopefully you'll definitely get involved in the next election. Very, very important. Talk about these issues. Talk to your neighbors. Call your legislators like we've done and they don't show up. Call them up. Let them know that, hey, you're going to be watching the next time around. So again, thank you very much for being a part of the, what, our show today. Guys, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Take care. Nice meeting you. <laughs>